Hi guys, it's good to see everybody. Um, it's been a while since I've, I've seen a lot of you guys, so it's, it's good to be in the same room and not on uh, on Zoom for everybody. Um, I'll open it up for questions, and if, uh, if if they haven't answered already, I'll try to do my best. Kevin, you said uh, at the end of last season that you were looking for a leader. You're you're wondering if a leader was existed on this. Uh, on this team, has anybody? The season hasn't begun yet, but have, do you sense that that's starting to build somewhere? That you're going to get that, find that player. Yeah, you know, um, leadership is those is one of those things where I don't know if it happens overnight, but I believe that um, you know when we hired Rick as the head coach, I think when we sat down and talked about, you know, who was going to be the leader, you know, obviously Rick is going to be one of those leaders. But um, over the summer, I think one started to emerge. Um, we, we had uh, a, a few of the players get together a couple times this summer. Uh, I think you guys may even reported on it. But uh, one player kind of organized that, and it was Malcolm. Um, but, I, you know, with this team, I think Malcolm's going to be a leader. I also think that Karras has an opportunity to be a leader. Uh, I also think that uh, Justin and Sabonis, I, I think this team uh, will have multiple leaders on, on, you know, different nights and, you know, over different subjects. It's not going to be, you know, we don't have that, uh, what I would call that alpha guy out there that's, pounding uh, the table on anything. But I think we'll have a bunch of guys step up and um, uh, be more of a, a, a team leadership, a community leadership. It takes a village, right? Hey, Kevin. How do you feel like a sense of normalcy will positively impact this team in all this in-person stuff and right. mostly vaccinated and that type of thing? Well, you know, since we have over, what, 90 95 percent of our guys vaccinated um, I think one of the things that was really challenging last year uh, is you know over the last couple of years we've been able to kind of bring the, the guys together and and have a lot of communication and dinners and and all that kind of stuff and I think I'm, I'm hopeful that you know with with the new rules and uh, you know once we get on the road if we can kind of get together, you know, just the absence of getting together, um, you know, didn't allow us to come together as a team. You know, I, I'm a big Ryder Cup fan, and I, I was watching that, and I was glued to it all week uh, weekend, and I saw Stricker talk a lot about how it was just important just to get them in the room at the same time and talk about whatever the issues were, and, you know, you saw Kepka and DeChambeau coming together, and you know, I'm, I'm really amazed at how that team comes together. And I was studying and I'm trying to read. I was reading as much as I could uh, uh, this morning on it, um, on how you get guys to come together. And I think, you know, shared experiences are really important. And that, that you know, from my experience being on the road and just bumping into somebody at breakfast, uh, having lunch, going to dinner, um, where it's not so much, you know, uh, organized. It just happens organically. I think that's really important. I think we really missed that last year. Um, Coach Carlisle talked about uh, T.J. Warren and his injury, saying that it's hopefully weeks and, and not months in terms of him being out. Right. Um, when, when he had the procedure on his, his foot, was that the healing process, was that always going to be a concern just based on where that injury was? And is that timetable kind of lining up with what you're seeing now? Well, that, that bone is, it's a challenging bone, to be honest with you, and that um, there's, there's some blood supply issues. And, and you know, every player really uh, comes back from that injury differently. It's, it's not one of those where you can kind of set in stone, he's going to be back in six weeks or eight weeks or whatever. And so what we've tried to do as best we could is, you know, you really try to dial in and look at the bone as, as deep as you can and and so we're expecting to do that again here in the next couple of weeks and then hopefully we know more but um you know we want to do what's best for 
for TJ, we, 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 didn't, we never take a short-term view of this. And, you know, everybody knows he's on his, his last year of a contract. And th that really sort of is irrelevant. We, we try to treat the player the long-term and, and, you know, we listen to the doctors. And whatever's best for him, we try to do. Harris uh, talked about Isaiah Jackson as kind of someone that has youthful energy. Um, what do you feel like he can bring to the team this season? Well, I was, you know, I was talking to Chad, our GM, the other day. I, I don't know if we've had that kind of a talented athlete in the building since probably Paul George. Um, I'm not trying to compare him to Paul George right now, but as a pure athlete, he does some things that I'm not seen in the gym in a long time. I mean, he is a He's a fast twitch athlete. Uh, he's at the rim all the time. And, you know, I don't know if it was uh, fair the way we looked at him. I, I thought he played great this summer. But when you look at, you know, uh, how it came to play, I mean, it was like no practice in the games. And I don't know if we saw the full um, Isaiah Jackson, but uh, we have really high hopes for him. I, I think he's got, you know, uh, Super talent. He's he's uh, he's a good worker, and uh, I think sky's the limit for him. We, we I think we got a diamond in the rough there. Kevin, this is the third season in a row back here. Okay. This is the third season in a row. You'll have a similar core of guys, you know, in, comprising of your rotation. How much does continuity mean to you and this team? And now that they can meet more in person, like you said, how much can that grow a team that's already been close for a few years? Well, it, you know, I've been in this game a long time, 30, 30 plus years, and I've been on teams that have had a lot of continuity. And it, um, I do think it's important. You know, I'm not a pure analytics guy, but I think there was a study a long time ago at MIT, the Sloan, and it said continuity, you know, average five wins. I, I don't know about that, but um, I do know that the more you know your teammates and know their tendencies, the better off you are. And so um, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that that makes a, a big difference this year. And um, I, from what I can feel, you know, like uh, sports is part science and, you know, sort of part feel. And, you know, what I can feel already is there's a really unique atmosphere in this uh, in, in the practice courts uh, the last couple of weeks. Highly competitive games, um, but uh, kind of a positive atmosphere, atmosphere. And I think Rick Rick has done a great job of, of saying this is what we want as a culture and, and, and really trying to start to begin that um, from, you know, a couple months ago. What would be your message to the fans that are looking forward to this season? Gosh, you know, I, I've been in this a long time. Um, you know, I don't want to get mad anybody mad at the uh, league, but I, if you've looked at our schedule the, the first two months, it's 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 a it's a it's a doozy. Um, and I think there's a long term approach that we got to take a look at. But um, I really believe that this team's going to be highly highly competitive. Um, you know, every year brings its own uniquenesses. Um, and as we went into the off season, uh, coming to this season, I think by, by what we did in signing Tory and uh, bringing TJ back, uh, we felt like that there was an edge that we missed last year. And um, I think this team's going to have an edge. I think you're going to see a team come together and be really, ex you know, a lot of excitement with the team. Uh, if you followed us in the summer summer league, and you watched our bench, it looked like it was an NBA Finals, you know. And I I, I like that. Uh, Coach Weiner did a great job of bringing a lot of excitement. I think that there's internally going to be a lot of excitement, and and I think the guys are going to really be rooting for each other. I think for the veterans that were here last year and you know not making the playoffs, uh, I think it hurt them, and I think there was a rededication of you know what we we're about, and I think we got away from it last year, and I think we're gonna we're gonna be a highly competitive team. Uh, you know, I, I always take a lot of pride when 
other GMs and uh, presidents tell me, like, we, we don't like coming in here and playing because it's, you know, a tough atmosphere. The fans are, you know, uh, loud and excited, and uh, we want to be a tough out all year long. Yes. Uh, what's uh, where do things stand with uh, Keelan Martin and his contract, and what what would be his potential future with this club? Well, he's he's on a he's on a contract, um, um, and he'll be you know evaluated uh, to make the team. But um, you could tell Keelan had a big off off season. Like he really he, his body looks really good. Uh, he's making shots, and, um, you know, I, I think he's got a good chance to make the team. I do. Uh, he's got to make the team, though, and that's that's tough. So he's got to go out there and do whatever he can to help the team win. And uh, it, Keelan's got, you know, an ability right now that the, the, that the whole league is looking for. He, he can shoot the ball, and he's got some size. So... You know, when we look out at the, the rest of the league and how do we defend some of these guys, he's got size to defend, and he can make shots. Those 3 and D guys in the NBA are, you know, extreme value. And so uh, I think second year for a player like him, knowing the building, you know, knowing his way around, um, I think they'll give him an advantage. We're rooting for him. Kevin, how do you balance or prioritize having, though, that last spot available, having some flexibility, whether it's injuries, whether it's a guy sure. that pops off with the bad ants, whatever, versus keeping the Keelan, I guess? You know, I, I think you said it. You know, it's a balance. Um, you know, there's a lot of NBA players that aren't in the NBA right now, too. And so we'll be evaluating that uh, over – the course of my 13 years here, we've always put an emphasis on if if you've worked here in the summer, if you've been in a you know within our G League confines and, and been part of that 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 team, uh, we we tend to gravitate towards those guys and give them an advantage. And so, Keelan being here, being here last year, uh, uh, you know that's. That's something that we we look at pretty hard. Um, but you know, if if there's a great player out there that becomes available, we have to look at it. That's my job. Any other questions for Kevin? I know you do lots of reviews, both personally, draft picks, all that. How about health? Is there anything you guys learned to change, to do different? managing minutes just to try to turn the tide? You know, it's an interesting question because when, you know, we were uh, talking with Rick in the very beginning, you know, I asked him, how, how does that work in Dallas and how have you done that? And I think there's been a, uh, an even more emphasis on um, being careful with practice times, being careful with uh, – you know, the, the sleep studies are coming in. I mean, I can tell you this. We looked at a deep, in a deep way, that whole uh, department. Um, and, and we feel like we got the best in the business. Sometimes a ballistic injury happens and you can't do anything about it. Um, but uh, we took a hard look at preventive stuff. And, and Josh Corbeil and Carl Eaton and Sean Wendell do the best uh, in the business. I think they've been named in the last couple of years the, the best training staff. And I think Dr. Huffer has won an award. I mean, we have high-level um, uh, medical staffs, but we, we push them to look and, and, and to try to do things better and maybe even a little different. So we're trying some things, and uh, how would we hope, hope to be healthy. What would you say sets you apart? Sets you apart from other um, NBA teams? Well, kind of the in in you know, the joke inside is that if you want to be a basketball player, this is where you come to play basketball. And we 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 like people like when we do our background on players, we we there's a lot that we pass because. There's a character model that we have to look at, and then I'm a big 
proponent. I, I think character wins long term. Maybe not short term, but I think there's a character component. And so we, there's some players that we pass on. Whether that's right or wrong, it, it, it's what we do. Um, and, and when building a team, uh, you have to have talent, and, and, and we think we've got talent. So character and talent. Uh, but, but if you want to become the best basketball player and work on your craft, there is no better place than Indiana Pacers because we focus. There's not quite the distractions here that maybe some other cities have, and we feel like it's an advantage. That if you want to become the best basketball player, this is a great place. Kevin, do you have any confidence level that you guys will be maybe 100% vaccinated by the start of the season, or is that still kind of in flux? Well, that's a difficult question. Obviously, we hope to be, but you know, we certainly respect uh, players that or personnel in the building that don't. But you know, I'm hopeful, but we'll see. Just wondering uh, how you feel about Goga Batadze's development at this point heading into camp. He's in the best shape of his life. He's, he's actually lost a little weight. Uh, and I think that Rick really wants him to become more agile. Um, we saw him as a, a shot blocker, but he's got to start making some shots. I think he's put a, a really a, a big emphasis on shooting, especially the three-point shot. But when you look at his block shots per minute, I mean, they're up with some of the best in the league already. I mean, he, he's in that miles category. Not quite as good per minute, but he, he's in the, in the ballpark. And, you know, we value, we value rim protection. So we're going to need him this year.